Okay, it's Wednesday at noon, which means it's time for Rippets Fast Pitch, Fast Pitch Live Show on Facebook, where we discuss all things fast pitch with the fast pitch community, where you'll see more coaches and players on and guests and informants, and see why more and more people are switching to the Rippet brand. Every Wednesday at noon, you'll, we'll be here with college prep tips, insights, discussions, updates, product uh, discussions uh, involving high school and, and college as well as uh, little league and travel ball preparation and we're here to inform you to make better decisions for your soft, softball purchases and softball team decisions. I'm your host Wes Pollock. I'll be flying solo today. Amy unfortunately could not be here but she'll be joining us again next week when we welcome her back. Today on the show we're excited to have Sean Congrega <laughs> from Rippet. Did I do that right? It was so close. Yeah, awesome. Congrega. Congrega. Okay. <laughs> Sean Congrega from Rippet Team Sales. And Sean will be helping us and guiding us through product maintenance, product purchases, and giving us a little more information on what Rippet's working on to better the softball player uh, community. Welcome, Sean. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Wes. Now, I'm looking forward to this. This is my second time on the uh, show here, so hopefully I'm better this time. And uh, just wanted to give a little background. If you don't know me, I've been here for a little over a year now in the team sales uh, avenue, working with Wes and a bunch of other coaches locally and uh, really trying to service the community as best as possible. And I wanted to give a shout out to one of our newest members of the Rippet team at the Exclusives Academy. Last night we had their unveiling for the uniforms, pants, and all of the other incredible products we have. So welcome Exclusives Academy, and uh, look forward to working with you for years. Well, we're excited to have them come on board. That's great news. Uh, well, we're on the topic of, um, obviously, equipment. Last week we had a product giveaway um, and the winner of the defensive fielder's mask, obviously a great looking mask, uh, is Lisa Matta. Lisa Matta won last week from uh, the defensive fielder's mask and that will be put to good use as we had a long discussion last week about the necessary uh, need, uh, the need for well, face masks, especially in the pitching circle, on the corners in the infield. We've seen a lot of you know, bad injuries unfortunately happen to those who didn't have one on, and especially at the younger age groups. So we really want to push and emphasize the importance of, of putting on the face mask gear for your protection. And like I said last week, I said the too cool for school mentality goes out the window when you break a nose or a jaw or a cheekbone. So in order to, you know, to preserve your, you know, your, your, your facial features and keep them intact for a long life after softball, it is important uh, to be properly geared. So Lisa, congratulations. On winning the face mask obviously uh, you know you share a tag a parent share a video coach make sure it's public so we can see it so make sure your settings are on public and when you tag a parent or a coach share a video you give yourself the best opportunity to win one of our product giveaways each week uh, this week's giveaway excited to announce the rip it backpack uh, uh, backpack uh, pack so very nice very stylish, um, as you can see, room for your bats, all your equipment, cleats, gloves, defensive gear like the mask. Uh, this is a great giveaway, a lot of value here. But again, you have to share a video, tag a parent or coach, make it public so we can see it, and you give yourself a chance to win a beautiful looking bag like this for your softball needs, okay? Awesome, good luck. Good luck with that. Okay, so, as we segue into now the, uh, the equipment and what the best ways of preserving it, maintaining it so it lasts longer, you're not making major purchases every year, which can cost a lot of money. As we know, you know, playing any sport, especially at the higher levels, it, it can be financially straining, but we're gonna hopefully give you some tips here that can limit some of your spent expenditures and maintain your equipment. So, Sean, how does one, in your opinion, store their gear for maximum longevity? Well, for the maximum longevity, obviously we want to have it where you're not leaving mom and dad's truck. Because our biggest thing is the heat, cold, whatever it is, will obviously take its toll on the products there. You'll have the glue inside the helmets that can obviously start to melt away. Cleats, for sure, the soles of cleats, we've seen all seen it where someone's drowning first and there goes their soul. Because if you leave it in the heat too long, it's gonna melt. Uh, taking things out, batting gloves, it's another purchase that we know that 
a lot of people make throughout the year because they don't have a lot of longevity to them. Taking them out, making sure they're airing out, cleats out of the bag, store it, try to hang it up, let stuff definitely, you know, be, stay out of the heat as much as possible. I mean, I, I have stories, well, <laughs> myself, my own kids, but also seeing, seeing kids leave their gloves and, and cars and bags, cleats and trunks, like you <laughs> mentioned, for a long duration of time. And not only does I think it sort of stale the, the equipment, the smell, smell is something <laughs> is not, it's not easily removable. And, I, and so certainly properly taking care of your equipment after each tournament, after each game, properly storing it, airing it out properly, you'll be saving lives. Yes, yes, all around. And the pack it up backpack's wonderful because it does have the cleat storage area, but that's still not gonna solve your problems for the smell. Right. But uh, yeah, just what you're saying, Wes, it's, it's so easy for us, especially after a tournament, to just go, oh, I'm gonna throw my stuff over there. We leave practice shirts in there, we leave towels in there. And then next thing you know, it might be three days before we pick it up and it does tend to smell like death, but it does affect your gloves, your batting gloves, your regular gloves, whatever position you're playing. And that takes a toll on the product, and you want to try to get as much longevity out of everything you have. I mean, I know as a coach, I carry a backpack around in tournaments, and sometimes I remind myself as well <laughs> that I've got to remove things that I got in there, extra jerseys and things that you just store in there uh, for the duration of the tournament that you forget about until you open up the bag for the next tournament and go, oh, yes, I sort of <laughs> forgot to uh, take this out. So good advice there. Um, how do we know when it's time to replace an item? or upgrade an item. Like, so in other words, you know, you have a bat for a certain period of time, you have a glove for a certain period of time. You know, how do you know when it's time either to say, hey, this has been good to me, it's still working for me, or you know what, you know, the ball's not coming off the bat the same way, I'm not reaching the ball in the other part of the plate the same way, uh, I'm over swinging, or I can't get the bat around on the ball quick enough. Are these all signs that it's time to upgrade or change, or my, or the ball, I'm an infielder and the ball keeps popping out of my glove, or you know, what are the, some of the telltale signs that you can tell the uh, fast pitch community that would help them understand that? Well, definitely, that's a great question because the, the main thing is, especially with the corner positions you're talking about, first base, third base, catchers, everyone has a different position glove out there. And so making sure the web's the, the proper length. First base, obviously, you're going to want a bigger web to catch the ball. But also just making sure the gloves are not, they still have form to it. Your hand obviously breaks it in and it's gonna have a form to it, but you wanna make sure that it's not too floppy where the ball can pop out or it's closing like a V like this. And uh, doing that and cleats is a huge thing. That's, a, that's the number one thing for all sports. It doesn't just matter about a cleat, but if your sole, if, if it's wearing down inside the shoe, it's time to get something new. You all, everyone knows when that foam gets in there and starts breaking down and it's basically you're walking on concrete there. Mm -hmm. It's time to get a new shoe because you're doing a lot of damage to the shoes there, but that's a, something that when you're playing up to six games in a weekend, shoes are huge to be able to keep, you know, not having your feet hurt. And all sure. that. Um, now with the gloves, you have, a, you have an infielder size glove and an outfielder size glove. Mm -hmm. And I know early on in, in a child's career, they, maybe the parents are not sure of which one to use, and maybe it doesn't matter at that early age, you can use one glove for all. But as you move up in ranks, as you play more, more serious levels, you've got to you're pretty much going to start shifting to where your position is, whether right. you're an infielder or you're an outfielder. So can you comment on any of the differences that you find between the infielder glove and the outfielder glove for parents who are having to make that decision now? For, for me, with, my, with the, the coaching I've done on the baseball side, but also working with softball, I'm finding that the infielders, you can obviously attest to this, the infielders, other than the first baseman, are starting to go to a little bit shorter glove mm -hmm. just to feel the ball a little bit more, and the outfield it's kind of stayed the same since even when I was playing in high school, where it's kind of that standard length. But obviously first base is longer, but the infielders definitely seeing a trend to be a little bit smaller. They want to feel their hand exactly. in the glove. Exactly, uh, to get the ball out quick we, and all of that. Yeah, we hear the common uh, term used, soft hands mm -hmm. in the infield. And that you know, it means a kid, a player, has you know, generally gifted with you know, smooth, soft hands. But at the same time, you can't have a clunker of a glove out there in the infield that you can't feel your your hands right and obviously in the outfield you go with the larger size glove because obviously extra range the ball comes in harder uh, at a line drive you want to stay in the glove if you're stretching for a ball in the outfield in the gap running one down obviously a little extra 
size glove makes it a little bit easier, helps your range. So mm -hmm. those are differences, uh, parents, on determining you know where your where your daughter's playing, if she's going to be an infielder or an outfielder, which size glove um, you want to get. Uh, what about on the bat side? The bat, uh, bat side is a, is a huge one too. You see it with all the coaching you've done. These girls grow at such a rapid rate now. I mean, especially at that 10 to 12 year old range, there's some kids that are my height and some kids that are still like <laughs> four foot eight. Right. And, but they grow and, and a lot of times, some people fight the change because they, they've had this bat, they're comfortable with it. And what they gotta realize is that as you're growing, so you're gonna need a little bit heavier bat, longer bat to be able to keep, keep all that inertia and energy going for, for the swings and everything. Cause it's, it's a product that I don't think lasts as long as it used to back when we were playing. Yeah, the bats are made, they're, they're really, they're hot right out of the gate, but they don't have the longevity, in my opinion, that they used to. Right. And so that's one thing, that's one product that I would suggest not going two, three, four years before buying a new one. Because right. that, you've seen dead bats, people will start saying, why is it not coming off? It sounds weird. It, the, the combustion breaks up pretty easy. Yeah, I think you know sometimes it's, you know kids fall in love with bats because they've had previous success with the same bat, but at some point they do outgrow it. Um, it becomes a little too light to swing. Um, the pop, as Sean's mentioned, comes out the bat, and it sort of sounds like a wet paper towel when it comes off the bat. Yes, it does. <laughs> if you you know when your bat has lost its pop, when like I said, the sound off the bat is more of a wet paper towel than anything else. But you know it's important probably to upgrade your bat well, again once you grow out of one. Be careful not to get an end. You know, end loaded bat if you're if you're not you know a big hitter type because I find that an end loaded type bat mm -hmm. probably is more suited for more of a power hitter where versus a slapping singles type hitter probably wants to go in a more evenly dispersed weight balanced bat. So and that's my opinion. There's my history in, in dealing with stuff like that. But yeah, so the bat again, you have to look at your plate coverage. Are we covering the whole plate with the bat size where I'm standing in the box? That those are all factors of determining whether you've outgrown your bat or not. As far as the shoes go, uh, good comment because, like I said, the, a lot of games are played in Florida. Yes. More than <laughs> much as anywhere else in the, in the country because of the weather. So your shoes have to be durable. And, you know, even though, even though it doesn't happen very often, there are now games played on artificial turf. Right. You've got to have the turf shoes. Yeah, and you've got to have those special turf shoes. But on top of that, you got to be careful because I've seen those turf shoes. I couldn't believe it, but I actually saw it this past season where a turf shoe actually melt, turf actually melted the shoe. I heard that because because uh, it gets about thirty degrees warmer on the on the turf. Yeah. So yeah, the, the glue's coming off. It's yeah. I've heard some horror stories with that. I think I turned them lava shoes. <laughs> you sort of need lava shoes when you go buy those turf shoes. Um, how about your thoughts on sharing equipment with teammates or siblings versus buying new equipment? At what point is the sort of that magic line that you cross over to get your own stuff versus sh sharing it? I mean, I. You know, at three kids who play ball, obviously you're trying to, you know, save where you can save. Exactly. But at some point, performance matters, and if, and if they're not performing well because they're not well, they're not uh, properly equi uh, equipped or using the right equipment for them, it's not going to it's not going to do you any good anyway. So, yeah. what's your thoughts on that? That's a great question. Now, uh, before that, I wanted to say hi to Ryan. You're always a pretty big supporter. Thank you for always being on this. Go Ryan. And also to Dr. Phillips softball. I do realize I live in Florida. So uh, that's a great question, though. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to the next. No, it's a, that's a million dollar question because like we talked about with the bats there, when they're coming up through the rec level, T-ball, obviously, they're not breaking bats or anything like that. So it's an easy transition with bats and even maybe gloves because you're not specific to a glove when you're coming up through T-ball, coach pitch, all of that. But once you hit that where you're playing weekend tournaments, and doing all of that where you're kind of out of the rec league where it's just the one practice, one game a week, then that's when you got to transition because that's when your products start to lose your life because of how much more you're playing. Mm -hmm. For me, I have three kids. My nine-year-old has passed down everything in baseball to my seven-year-old. But now we're getting to the stage he's doing travel ball and doing all that, that he's got his stuff and now Nolan obviously has his stuff. But cleats is always different. We, every season we're getting new cleats. This doesn't matter, we don't pass that stuff down. But like anyone else, we try to save money as much as possible because everything is expensive now, and uh, having multiple kids is always fun. But once you get to, once you make that leap of faith and going into the travel side, it's uh, I think that's kind of where you tie off and start getting your own specific stuff. Yeah, it's funny. I had a glove that I used when I played way back, um, and I would pass that down to my. 
two daughters who played. <laughs> that was sort of like the passing of the torch of the glove, which was like a size 20. Right. Oh, the kid was exaggerating. The web was this big? Yeah, giant <laughs> glove. And they were both outfielders, so I gave them the gloves to use during their, you know, as they were moving up the ranks. And it actually made them look like superstars sometimes because they could take like seven feet of where they were and they'd come down with the ball. But at some point it became flat as a pancake and things started bouncing together. Mm -hmm. And I realized, okay, it's time for us to retire, you know, that glove and, and get them their own specific one. So there's just a little bit of side note. Um, in your mind, how would you prioritize your equipment purchases, most important to least important? They're all important, but if you were to rank them, how would you rank your equipment purchases? My personal opinion would be number one would be your, your glove, just because like we've talked about infielders, I mean, there's such specifics to every position. So my glove is the number one thing. You want to be able to feel the ball like you're talking about with the soft hands, but that's kind of the thing that you don't want to ever share with anyone. That's your glove, this is mine, because this is what, you're doing more than that than just hitting. You can play the field a lot more than you get up to bat. So that would be my number one thing. Cleats is huge. And turfs, obviously, where more and more people are, you're going to be playing on turfs, whether it's a travel ball or a college now even. And then after that is the bat. The bat's obviously something that will gives you gives you an edge and more importantly gives you confidence there because we're all brand specific with bats, so it kind of gets that confidence in you, even if it's nothing different than another bat that's exactly the same. Okay. Um, yeah, I would agree that, yeah, obviously you need a glove to play, and that's how to be the <laughs> glove for sure. <laughs> And a bat, you know, bats, I know t some teams have shared bats and, right. you know, but I, I do believe at the end of the day, every player wants their own, wants a bat to call their own, whether it's for a specific size, whether it's just they want to, a lot of kids sleep with their bats, yeah. and they put them under their pillows, I mean, for a, a superstition, but, and, and what about cleats? Cleats. I mean, cleats would think is obvious that they want their own cleats and stuff like that, to share cleats, obviously. So. Cleats, cleats are the one that I, I really would spend, the, that I will always spend money on my kids on because you, you're all, you're, you could be a $30 cleat or a $130 cleat. And that's one of those things where that comfort can add to speed, can add to longevity. So it's one of those products that me specifically, I'm not going to pay less just because to kind of cut corners there. Because it's, I mean, you're on your feet the whole game, other than sitting, if you're sitting on the bench to grab a drink of water, but you're on your feet, so obviously that's a huge thing. What about the, um, sometimes we're into a situation where a team has bought team helmets. All one color, similar. You guys have Griffin has great helmets, great mask. My team uh, obviously purchased the whole team's worth of helmets from you guys. Um, I, I love them. I think, the, like I said, the vision of the, of the mask is excellent off the helmet. Uh, the, the colors are sharp. They match our wildfire um, club colors. But they always have a player or two come in with their own color from another team. Right. You know, and you know, and but you're asking the parent to pay. You know, to for another helmet, even if they have a perfectly good one but a different color. Right. Um, you know, I know it's tough on them, but I think that, you know, the trend probably is it's probably if you're going to be part of the team, is you guys sort of look like you're part of the team. Oh, exactly. And if you look at it the way travel ball is in all sports, they're trying to emulate what college is doing, right? Right. And so when you go watch Oregon Ducks play, they have the, they're all going to wear the same thing. Correct. So when you're, when you're investing your time and the kids, the kids' time and passion into it, it, it makes sense to look like a team. And I, I definitely, at rec ball, when they're f figuring out if they love the sport, then it's you could have a pink one, you could have a black one, like you're saying, they're just all over the place. But once you get into a team, buy into the team concept. Because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is the camaraderie. You see teams that are talented, but don't get along as well, lose to teams that are not as talented, but are a, a group. And so I think with the helmets there, everyone looks, looks sharp together and they look identical. What about, well, something that's not commonly talked about, it's just taken for granted, I think, and sitting around the shelves is the batting gloves. The right fitting batting gloves, the right looking batting gloves. You know, somehow the extra padding in here, uh, in the hands, you know, the pressure points, blister, yeah. pressure points avoid the blisters and calluses and things like that. We talked a little bit about the selection of batting gloves and rippets. Uh, now I know has some batting gloves available now too. We Yes, we will be in the next month having our batting gloves available there. And that's a lot of things that we looked into with our VIP program and our testing is interviewing a bunch of girls to see what they liked about certain gloves. And this is the one product where it's kind of all over the place. I think it's a underserved product where, especially for the softball community, you see a lot of when you walk into Dick's or Academy, it's basically a baseball glove, and the girls just have to figure out which one fits. So
So there's not many brands that are specific to softball with the size. You know, obviously the fingers are, are going to be a little bit shorter and not as and a little more, more narrow. But just figuring that out and figuring out where the pressure points. It could be, it's it's different for everyone. So having different options there. Some people absolutely don't like any padding period because they right. feel like they can feel the bat more. Yeah. And so just finding that out in there's so many different selections. But obviously in the softball community, I think we probably are going to dominate with ours. So <laughs> we'll just have everyone buy ours. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. That's uh, it's one of those things where where that's very specific too. But make sure it's not too loose. Batting gloves, I, right. I, it drives me nuts when I see kids that have space between their wrists there. It's supposed to be tight so you can feel the bat right. and all of that. And you see kids that have this much up on their fingers there. It's like, well, you could have got another size down and made it yeah. fit, fit like a glove. I, 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 I like shoes, it's not as fast as what you grow into it. You yeah. know, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you do not get that same time to do that. So I agree with you that a, a good fitting glove yeah. uh, is important. And like I said, I played, I played a long time and I always wore batting gloves. I, could never figure out those who didn't, because when the temperatures used to drop from where I grew up, I mean, it was cold, and I needed, oh, yeah. I needed to feel that bat to get maximum performance. Uh, I remember growing up in Minnesota, those first games in the yeah. high school season at 30 degrees. Right. <laughs> you, exactly. you almost didn't want to hit the ball because it was right. going to hurt that bad. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, now let's talk a little bit about transition from high school travel to college. And this is an interesting question because it happens a lot, and a lot of people aren't prepared for this. I've talked to my players extensively about this in parents. But if you're not sort of experienced in the college uh, arena, like having two kids who play college, they grow up playing high school travel using a certain brand bat, mm -hmm. or a certain type of glove. And they get to college and the college is sponsored, especially division ones, right. higher divisions, by a certain company. And you can't you it may not be the same brand that you've been playing all your life. And a lot of kids struggle when they have to make that conversion to that college brand that their college that they committed to and signed with are using that brand. I've advised people to begin to transition mm -hmm. to that brand, you know, year out so that they are better prepared when they get to college. Having said that, be careful not to go overboard because colleges, especially the higher level ones and down to the college provide equipment mm -hmm. for their recruits and their players they, by the sponsors they're given. So you get your swag bags of, of clothing, you get your glove fielding mitts, you get bats either for the team or sometimes individually. So can you talk to that sort of conversion that a high school travel ball player needs to make from the potentially the brand they're using through their whole entire career to what they will be using when they get to college? I mean that's that's an excellent that's an excellent point for the simple fact that by the time you're getting into that high level where you're talking about being a D1 player or a, you know any division there, it's big to look into it because you should be narrowing down your selections, I would guess. You're not going to have a list of 100 different schools by the time you're being heavily recruited. So you need to start looking at that because once you get to college, if they are under contract, yeah, if, if you don't like that you have to wear Nike turfs or Nike cleats, too bad. If you're, if you're at Oregon or any of those schools that are sponsored by Nike, you have to wear it. But also along the lines with the hard goods, same thing. They've got separate contracts with that, so you'll be required to use their gloves. Their basically every product that will be provided for them, you have to use. So bats too. So you might run into it where I just oh I can't hit with this bat. Period. What well, you're gonna have to learn to if you want to <laughs> be invested in that college because right. it's uh, those are those are great points because we don't always think about that. But every college, every sport, they I mean that's you're walking into what they have set up and. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, you have to play by the rules. Yeah, including shoes. Yeah, exactly. Right? Cleats, where you're used to a certain type of cleat, and cleats can be heavier or lighter. And if you're a, a speedster, a, a player who prides themselves on slapping or stolen bases, and you've been wearing a certain type of shoe that may be a little lighter for better speed, and you go to a school that you know has a brand that is a good brand, but maybe a little heavier shoe, you've got to get used to running in that shoe. And so it's not a bad idea, again, to start experimenting prior to getting to the college. Well, and especially for pitchers. Yeah. Pitchers are, you know, with the pit protective toe, the pitching toe, it's huge because they are they really do fall in love with the brand and yeah. kind of stick with it. Right. And then that can change because some of the major brands don't put as much emphasis on a protective toe on, on that. So that's definitely something to look into because they have, I mean, they're the ones that wear out their shoes the quickest. 
there any questions from the audience or any comments we will address? Or? No, I have no questions here. But a lot of, I see people tagging a lot. That's good. So we're going to have a good drawing for the backpack. Yeah, important to keep tagging, sharing videos, tagging coaches, parents. Give yourself the best opportunity. I think only one, this, only one person puppy. told me to stop talking, so that's good. This is really good. <laughs> it's an awesome looking bag. And again, like I said, this was given away last week. And again, this could be a lifesaver. Um, so again, we, we try to do our best to fit this fast pitch community with the best type of equipment from Rip It. So please tag, share, videos, coaches, parents, get involved, and hopefully give yourself the best opportunity to win one of these great prizes. Um, okay, well, like I said, part of our sort of like, we said we'd include sort of high school updates and talk a lot about the equipment, and I'm hoping that helped uh, everybody watching and sort of gives them ideas. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment or ask. But also at the same time, high school is just starting. It's about a week or two into the season. Um, and we've said some you know, notable things. People are now, I appreciate the uh, feedback I'm getting from the softball community as to what's going on in some schools, some players. And as, as, as we discussed earlier uh, in, our, in our new direction, we're gonna comment on some performances that we felt you know, were above and beyond. If, if I haven't mentioned you in this one, we'll try and get you another one, but please, <laughs> Continue to give me the feedback as to what's going on in your schools and your programs, upsets, big performances, and we'll try and get you on every show uh, as we dedicate a few minutes to high school updates. So a few mentions right here, high school hero shout outs, I call them. Uh, Dr. Phillips off to a quick start. Uh, Rachel Trockey has had two no-hitters in the first three games. Wow. 31 strikeouts to 15 innings, only giving up one hit. I know Rachel well, she's a great kid. Going to Florida Tech, played for me this nice. past season. Nice. Uh, so congratulations, Rachel, on nice job. Uh, Deja Ben was four for four. Dr. Phil's four runs. Gracie Lopez, uh, know her very well, going to Ave Maria. Um, Ave Maria, sorry. Um, she has two for three with you know, a couple of RBIs against McIva. Gracie plays on me and my team. He plays for a while, great little player. Uh, Kayla Mayo over at Lake Mimiola was two for three with two triples. Nice. Unfortunately, lost 6-5 to Osceola in a great game. But you know, to, anytime you get two triples in a game, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Janae Brown against Edgewater was three for three with four RBIs. Um, big performance from Janae um, from Popka. Uh, Cammy McAdon, uh, who's a freshman infielder uh, out of TFA, uh, was had six RBIs against Berkeley Prep with a grand slam. Not too shabby. That's a career. That's a career. <laughs> That's a career for some people. I'm telling. <laughs> but what a great start for Cammy uh, as well. So again, uh, continue good luck. I know Olympia's off to a quick start. I think they were four and zero last time I checked. Yep. Uh, so they've got they've got uh, they're going in the right direction. So I mean, I'm, I'm confident West Orange will be its perennial strong self at one, once they get everything going. And uh, I think Dr. Phillips is going to be tough. Um, you know, and we'll, and we'll talk about all the other different types of schools throughout the season. But again, don't be hesitant. You know, um, to let us know what's going on. Um, so so my Bailey Fernandez, I know had a home run, was like six for seven in her first couple games. As she's going to Lynn, she did Lynn University commit. Nice. So I know she's she's done well too. I just games. just got one a comment from Ryan on that that uh, in Arkansas there was a girl who just hit for the cycle in high school. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome, yeah. awesome. Hey, so that's uh, that's an impressive feat. Thank uh, you for that, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. I think I read about a college player too that hit. Uh, uh, the LSU, LSU guy? Was, what, was the kid? Uh, Dar I think I thought it was a single, uh, solo home run, a two run home run, three run home run. I think hit for the cycle of home runs. Oh, wow. Anytime, <laughs> you, anytime you hit for the cycle in baseball or softball, it's an impressive feat. And Ryan, it should be acknowledged. Ryan's clarifying it, it was college. So yeah, yeah, it was the same one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a, a home run cycle, if I'm not mistaken. I think I read something like that, which is awesome. Uh, but again, keep those comments, keep the feedback coming, tag, share for product opportunities. Uh, but again, feedback on the high school. We'll continue to uh, study the high school scene. Uh, there was a great matchup. I wish would have taken place last night. Not a, so my, it, it, it's one of those unusual ones where Olympia was going to play Windermere Prep. Okay. And that doesn't happen very often when you get a sort of a powerhouse <laughs> auto school against a good private school. Private school, yeah. But I would have, I, you know, I would have really liked to see how that game would turn out. But it was unfortunately college in the rain, so <laughs> that didn't work out. But hopefully, there'll, maybe there'll be a makeup down the road. But again, please give us your comments. We want to talk about as many players as we can, um, and as many teams as we can. And the more information we get from you, the more informed we have, and the more time we have to discuss it. Uh, basically, so we're coming to the end of our show. I want to thank you uh, 
uh, for joining us again on our Rip It Live on Facebook show. Again, like and, like and comment and promote the sport of softball through our, through our vehicle here. Maybe remember to tag a parent or coach or share a video for a chance to win the backpack. One more time. It's a nice looking backpack. One of the nicer ones I've seen actually, quite often I've seen a lot. This is a great looking, great looking item. So remember to uh, you know, tag and share. Uh, we'll be announcing next week's winner uh, on our live show next Wednesday. Again, noon time, every, every, every Wednesday at noon. Uh, on next week's live show, we'll be discussing high school coaches' perspectives for the season, plans for the season, programs, details, what goes into preparing for the season, what they think, how they think their season's going to go. We've already got one guest lined up, and we're hoping to get a second uh, high school coach, uh, James Wood. We call him Coach JD from Windermere Prep. We'll be on the show next week, and again, we hope to get another coach to give their perspective. Maybe we can compare the two and see how each prepares for their upcoming season as we just got started. Um, so again, we hope you join us uh, next week on Rip It Live on Facebook. Thank you very much. Thank you.